Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to my usual repair videos. And what that is, is I'm basically going to be attempting to work with a quite budget setup. And the reason for this is because I get asked all the time or I get comments from viewers uh, on some of my videos saying I'd love to get into this sort of work, but I, I can't afford it. Uh, I haven't got the money, it's too expensive. Um, or even just what kind of equipment do you recommend for a beginner? And the one thing that I say to people is that the good thing about this line of work about repairs, micro soldering, uh, advanced component level repair, is you really don't need a lot of money to get started. And the way that I got started, I actually started off with a really, really cheap setup, something similar to this. Now, it's not going to be the exact setup, and I didn't even have a microscope. Uh, I was using my phone with a basic, basically with a uh, little tripod or a desk stand, uh, depending where I was, to turn my phone into a microscope. Now that's still not an option for a lot of people because some people can't even afford a decent quality phone. Now, luckily for me, I've managed to build my career to a point where I've got nice equipment, where I've got the equipment that is going to do a really good job. But it was never always like that. Uh, when I started with this, I was unemployed. I had absolutely no money coming in at all, apart from um, what's known pretty much worldwide as state benefits. Um, in this country, it's known as uh, Job Seekers Allowance or now Universal Credit, uh, where you basically just get um, a set amount of money each week off the government to live on. Um, so... I had absolutely no no money at all, I had no savings, I had no job, I had no way that I could afford things like the Atten ST862D, the Hakko uh, FX951 soldering iron, the Rockseed RS305 triple, triple power supply, or even this thing that you can see just behind me here in the background, the BGA rework station, because that was expensive, that was about a £1,000, or rather it didn't cost me that much, I bought it second hand, but that's what the cost to buy. Um, so it's all well and good having all of this nice equipment and things like that and being able to show off your really expensive oscilloscope, your really good quality uh, hot air stations such as, like I said, the Atten ST862D, things like that. And uh, yeah, it's all well and good, but obviously we can't all afford that. And a lot of the time people are just looking for a way that they can earn money doing something that they enjoy, a means to an end, if you will. Um, so that's what this video is about today and as you can see by this pile in front of me I've got all of that equipment here and I'm going to be giving this away at the end of this video so be sure to stick around because I'm going to give you a keyword at some point in the video so you've got to watch all the way through but I'm going to give you a keyword at some point in the video where you can enter that keyword into the comment section and get entered into the giveaway. If you want to be entered into the giveaway, you need, do need to be subscribed to the channel. You don't have to be subscribed for months. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe, uh, get subscribed to the channel, turn on the bell notifications um, so that you get notified when the live stream for the random prize draw to give all of this away will be drawn. Now, I will say that I will only be sending this for free in the UK because of cost and import fees and things like that. If you are in another country, you are more than welcome to enter, but you will need to pay shipping fees because, uh, to be honest with you, um, shipping fees for all of this is probably going to be uh, around about uh, £40 or US 60 US dollars, something like that. It's too expensive for me to ship. Um, I mean, if you do want to be entered into the giveaway, like I said, you're more than welcome to enter, but you've got to be expected to pay shipping fees if you are from a different country. But that being said, let's get into this thing. So I'm gonna lower this camera down a bit, so you're probably not gonna be able to see my face, but I'm gonna lower this camera down a bit so you can see what we're doing, see what we're unboxing here. Um, and I, I should say that these uh, these particular products are not sponsored, uh, but basically <clears throat> I've bought them all with my own money from AliExpress. It cost around about 150 pound. The only thing I haven't got here, which I will include in the giveaway is a multimeter. And the multimeter I'm going to include in the giveaway is going to be the same as this. Uh, this was around about £30 from AliExpress. Uh, sorry, not from AliExpress, from uh, from Amazon. And this is a decent little multimeter. This is the one I use every single day. Um, and I'm going to include one of these in the giveaway as well. And this multimeter in particular does include 
uh, a USB function so it can be hooked up to the computer so you can get computer readouts on the screen. But that being said, that's going to be included in the video, not that one in particular. It will be a brand new one, same as all of this stuff here. Um, and also, what I'll also include is some solder flux. So I use Kingbo RMA218. It's pretty cheap, about £2 a tube. I'll include a couple of tubes of this in the giveaway as well. And also, the solder that I use, I've got a big reel, but I've also got a spool. It's not the Atten solder. Um, I've just re-spooled it, and I'll include this spool of leaded solder in with the giveaway as well. And what I'll also include is a pair of mechanic tweezers, fine point tweezers. So I'm going to include them as well. They are brand new. I'm not going to use these because I don't really want to give used tweezers away. So I'll include these mechanic blue tweezers. I'm not keen on these, but I'm going to give them in with the giveaway anyway, along with a pair of the tweezers that I do generally use. And I can probably not find now because I am a messy little bugger. <laughs> but uh, I do have some of these tweezers on the way. Um, so some of these angle tweezers and also a pair of these fine point tweezers as well. So I'll include a couple of pairs of them in the giveaway as well to get someone started. So I'm going to lower this camera down now. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video wouldn't have been possible without the help from PCBWay.com. PCBWay offers fast, affordable, custom printed circuit boards, flexible printed circuit boards, SMD stencils, and now even CNC and 3D printing. Right now, PCBWay is offering a $25 welcome sale to all new customers for custom CNC machining and parts online. You can get 10% off your first order with fast 48 hour turnaround times. Simply head over to the PCBWay.com link in the video description and submit your CAD files to get started. Now back to the video. Okay, so as you can see in front of me, I've got a big mess of stuff here. You're going to have to excuse this. This is my normal microscope. It is fixed. I can't move it for the sake of this video. I am sorry. Uh, so I can't actually do anything about that. I am going to try and move a couple of these things out of the way as well, like my HDMI cables and stuff. But basically, what we've got here is a pretty much full setup of everything we're going to need to be able to do basic repairs, such as USB-C ports, HDMI ports, uh, some basic UFN soldering, things like that. And I'm going to do a few examples. I'm not going to be working on a live case for this, but I do have some of my own boards which are working, which I can do to show you that this stuff does actually work. So the first thing we've got is probably going to be the most important thing for any repair toolkit, and that's going to be a screwdriver set. So this is a cheap screwdriver set. I can't remember exactly how much any of this cost. I will leave links to all of it in the video description. Like I said, these parts are not sponsored. So I'll leave links to these in the video description to the AliExpress listings, which I use to purchase them along with the prices of everything. But the first thing we've got here is a screwdriver set. And like I said, you need a basic screwdriver set. It's all well and good having a iFixit kit or having a fancy screwdriver set like this. But you can basically get the exact same thing a lot cheaper off AliExpress. So obviously I'm not going to be using my iFixit kit for the sake of this video. I'm going to be using this nice cheap little tool kit here. And it's got pretty much every screwdriver that, that we're going to need along with the screwdriver handle, a couple of pairs of... Uh, well, one pair of tweezers actually, and a couple of pry tools. So this is gonna be included in the giveaway as well. So we're gonna be using that. The next thing that we've got on the list is gonna be, what is it? We have a soldering iron. Now I can't remember the exact prices of these, like I said, but this is a fairly nifty little soldering iron, to be honest. It's not gonna be the greatest, but it is similar to the TS100. And for those of you that have been a regular on the channel, you'll know that I used the TS100 for quite some time before I was graciously donated the FX951 by a viewer. And this is the T12956 soldering iron. Um, so that's the, that's the actual unit which is gonna power it. And also we've got the soldering iron itself. 
and we've also got the power cable as well. So this is an EU power cable. Can't include. I can't use this. Um, I will include a UK cable, so I'll swap this out for a normal UK plug. And I'm going to be using the plugs off my own soldering irons for the sake of the video because otherwise I've got to unroute 20 cables literally to, just to be able to plug things in, and that's a lot a lot of time. So this soldering iron is based off the Hakko and. It's basically based off my exact soldering iron. It uses the same tips. It works with the same tips. And as you can see, there are several tips here. There's a knife tip and there's two conical tips in this. Uh, with this particular uh, item. There should have been five and I don't know where the other two are. Um, I don't know if my son's got, got hold of them or something. But basically you can buy a bunch of about 12 or 13 tips off eBay for around about 20 British pounds and they'll work absolutely perfectly fine with this and as you can see unlike the TS100 these particular tips they do indeed have a cover on them so you just pop the tip in there like that and you've got yourself a very nifty little soldering iron there I'm not going to be using that tip because that's a knife tip what I am going to do I don't want to send stuff like this consumable stuff I don't want to send used so what I am going to do is I'm going to put this one back inside the packet here just like that those are going to go to one side so there's a knife tip and two conical tips if i can find the other two tips i'll include them if i can't then i'm sorry uh, but basically we've got the three tips there i'm going to be using my own tips for this particular video so i'm just going to take the tip out of my normal hacko iron i had to make sure that wasn't hot there uh, so i'll take the normal tip out of my hacko iron and i'll use that one for just for the sake of the video just so i'm not using a tip that you're going to be using if you win the giveaway so i'll use that tip for now and like i said you can buy tips for around about 20 pound on uh, ebay for a bunch of tips the next thing we've got is going to be the hot air station so i'll move this out of the way for a second so we've got a basic hot air station here again it's, it's got a us um an eu i think it's an eu plug i'm not sure either eu or us i can never tell the difference but we've got a hot air station here it's a basic hot air station and this is fairly cheap again price will be in the description and um, this is a 858d so it's based on the technology that all of the other cheap um chinese hot air stations run off so we've got the hot air station there and i believe this should be the heat gun itself the actual hot air wand i will package all this back up so we've got the wand there and uh, I believe my mate Vince uses a similar wand to this on all of his repair videos. If you don't know who my mate Vince is, just uh, check out the description on the Friends of the Channel section. And you can find his channel there. So we've got the hot air station here. And basically what we need to do with this is we need to get it set up so as we can use the, the included stand. So it's a fairly cheap stand. It's nothing too special, but it will definitely get the job done. I'm going to be opening up the screwdrivers. I'm not sure exactly what's in here, but it should have pretty much everything we need for repairing most electronics. So, yeah, there's quite a few different bits here. We've got a PH1, which should be pretty perfect. I'm left-handed, so this is going to be a little bit difficult for me. I can't actually use a screwdriver right-handed. Swap hands because I'm backwards as people may call it. Feels a little bit weird me using this one after using the iFixit kit for the past um, eight or nine months. But never mind. Okay, and that is pretty much ready to go there. So we're going to unplug. We're going to well untwist this twist tie here. I'll pop that over there just so I can retie it later on. And I'm going to plug this in. So let's see if I can get you a view of this. So this should, should only go in one way. And then don't forget to secure it down. We don't want to end up having that come loose. So I'm going to be using that. And as you see there, the screwdriver set has already come in handy. And I'm going to unplug my Atten hot air station. So it's a little bit different, difficult because this is not a studio environment. This is an actual working environment. So there we go. So that's plugged in and it seems to be on. 
fantastic okay so we set to 350 degrees so let's go to that goes to 500 degrees celsius total we're going to set it to 450 we've got an airflow temperature control an airflow control there and that is getting hot i don't recommend doing that actually let's see if we've got auto off feature on this so i'm going to move this out of the way so it doesn't melt anything here and it does have an auto sleep feature so what that's going to do now is it's going to cool itself down the elements already turned off it's going to cool itself down and it should turn off in a second once the nozzle or once the element is cooling off so what it does is it turns the element off and then it will blow air through until all of the hot air has been blown away so it does have a auto sleep feature so i've actually still got a nozzle right here which i used to use uh, so that if that's not evident enough that i used to use this actual equipment i don't know what is so that's actually the same size nozzle as this one i think or yep that's the same size nozzle as this one so what i'm going to do again consumable products these do wear out eventually i'm going to use my own from back in the day so what you do here is just basically tighten it up just like that so as it doesn't fall off and there is the hot air station set up next we need to set up the soldering iron so i'm going to take the plug out of my hacko for this same plug so take the plug out of my hacko let's pop that on there and there we go so we get a an error beep and we're going to plug this into here just like this i'm going to screw that down fantastic and one thing that i will need to try and figure out is a stand i'm going to use my hacko stand for now um, I'm just wondering if there's no there's no option for a sleep function sadly so there's no option for a sleep function on this so you will have to just flick that on and off as we go along but I'm going to use that stand just to keep it safe so we are at 200 300 This is burning off a little bit of smoke. I'm assuming that's just coming from the inside. It smells like new electronics burning. So hopefully it works. That's at 330 degrees Celsius. So let's see if this actually melts solder at 330. It does. So very accurate temperatures there. And as you see there, that does melt solder very nicely indeed. I might actually buy one of these as an emergency in case my hacko ever fails. And we do actually have an indicator just here. It's going to be hard to focus there, but we've got an indicator that says set to 320. And I can adjust that. So 340, 350, 360, 80. Let's go 380. Boost 430. Oh, so does that just give you an instant boost? That's cool. Okay. So I'm going to turn that off for a bit because we don't need it yet. So, yeah, I might actually buy one of them as, an, uh, as a bit of an emergency machine. So here we have a cheap microscope, and this should do the job for some basic repairs. 7-inch LCD, multifunction gimbal, uh, HD 12 megapixel image sensor, continuous magnification, super battery working for 3 to 4 hours. Okay, so it runs off a battery, does it now? I didn't know that. It looks like it runs off USB, so I'll probably just pair it off my computer. Save having to unplug anything. I could unplug my Nintendo Switch cable. Right, I'm going to wreck this by taking it out. But it's fine. Okay, so let's get this all set up here. Um, this is definitely very similar to the Andenstar that I reviewed. Looks like a very similar layout and setup. 
Okay, so let's secure that down there. Okay, so you can tilt this. He's got a decent tilt angle and stuff. That's pretty cool. What else have we got on the back? We have a micro USB, a micro SD card for recording, and that's pretty much it. So no external HDMI, which it's fine. I mean, we don't have to be able to plug it in. I'm going to switch back to this camera here so you can see this in all of its glory. So we can scroll this down so we can get in a little bit closer there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and plug this in to my computer. It runs off 5 volt apparently, which should be perfectly fine. And it's got a cheap power supply included. Uh, it outputs 2 amps. Okay, 2 amps. So I might not be able to power it off my computer then. But we'll try, because we always like to stretch the limits. So let's try and pair this off my USB cable then, or rather off my USB port. And it does pair it. Awesome. As you can see there, that's turned on. So we want to use... Ah, you can use it as a PC camera. I just tried to use it as touchscreen. <laughs> so let's use this as a PC camera then. Okay, that'll work. So I'm going to get this set up on the PC as a uh, on OBS as a webcam. So as you guys can see it's on the screen, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Okay, so as you can see on the screen now, we've got another image. And if I pop this under here, we can see that we do actually have an image. So the image isn't great. But I reckon I could work with that, and I reckon I could actually work with soldering a chip or something with it. So this is going to be a little bit unsteady. Let me just try and get this a bit more stable. I'm going to take it off of the blue mat. Just move this to one side. Because it is a little bit of a stretch from where my USB cables are. And the port it's in is the only one that it can actually be put in. So the frame rate isn't great on this, but it's... Uh, Certainly do the job. Right, let's have a look and see what we can do about this. So yeah, it is quite a cheap scope, but this would definitely get you by. Um, I can't see any menu. To adjust the brightness and things like that. But I'm assuming that if this was plugged into a different screen it would be fine or rather if it was using the main screen it would be fine so i'm going to try and remove bear, bear in mind i've got a really small image on the screen just here um and i'm going to try and do a m92 t36 swap using this so i'm going to use the hot air gun now bear in mind i am left-handed it's going to be very difficult for me to work here but i'm going to take a pair of tweezers out of my pile and I'm set to 450 degrees Celsius here feels a little bit weird to me using this for the first time in a long time Okay, that took a lot longer than I'm used to, but it's off. And as you can see, I didn't need, I didn't knock any components. Now, bear in mind that I do not have very good hand-eye coordination when I'm using an LCD or when I'm using a digital display for a microscope. So, one of the things that I really do suck at is looking at a screen while I'm working, and I've just managed to pull that uh, component off there without. Too much of a, a headache, really. So I know it's a little bit dark, but I will switch it to a plug socket um, pretty soon, uh, where I can use uh, where I can use the included screen. So I'm going to reinstall this chip. It would definitely help if I had a board holder. Uh, 
Okay, so that's tacked down in place. I'll add some flux. If I can find where I put my flux, there it is. I'm always losing stuff on this workshop, on this workbench. So I really do suck at using a screen, but if this is the first time you're going to be using a microscope, this is what you would get used to. I've always used an optical microscope. I'm actually going to include, I'm actually going to increase the temperature a little bit to 465 here. Wait for that to get to temp. Okay. I will use the soldering iron in a minute. Whoops. Okay, that's in place. So that's lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to clean up the board. So I've had to put the microscope really small screen because I'm actually filming in 1440p and obviously this camera isn't 1440p so I can't really give you a big image. The board's a little bit hot still so I'm going to be careful where I'm touching. But that went relatively well without incident there, considering I am not used to using these tools. So I'm just using isopropyl alcohol with a cotton swab here. Um, let's actually come down a little bit closer, see if we can get some better light here. Oh, well, I'm not sure if that's uh, any better, but never mind. It should be fine. Right, so what we need to do is we need to actually clean up these pads because at the moment there's not enough solder around the pads. So because, because the solder that I've used or the solder that's on there is the original solder, it hasn't been replaced, we need to basically sort that out. So I'm going to use the new soldering iron, the one that I'm using here, the the, uh, the T12 soldering iron here. Here we go. So we need to be soldering the top. And this tip is way too big. I'm going to have to use a different tip. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm also going to try and angle this a little bit. All right, that should work. So I'm actually using a conical tip right now, the tips that are included with this. I don't actually like conical tips, some people do. This is very difficult for me. And the reason for that is because, like I said, I'm not used to looking like this onto a screen. And yes, it does make a huge difference. If you're used to looking at a screen, it's fine. Uh, I'll just bridge those caps there, but never mind. I'll sort them in a moment. If, you, if you're if used to looking at a screen, it's fine. But if you're used to looking into an optical port, it can be rather tricky. I'll sort those uh, caps out, though. I'm just going to... Clean up the rest of these pads first. There are definitely some settings that need adjusting on this machine. So you need to, the auto sleep feature is going to need to be set. Sadly, that is not something that I'm going to be able to set because you need to set it to your preferences, not mine. A bit of excess solder there, but that's absolutely fine. This is the tricky part because right here there are some very close components on this part of the board here. I mean, that particular component there doesn't actually matter, it's just a little bypass capacitor. And 
I'm not sure why this keeps going to sleep. I think it's maybe a one minute thing or a two minute thing. Well, I'm sure whoever wins this will figure out how to use it properly. Personally, I don't know. And Okay, that looks good. That looks pretty good. So what I need to do is just clean up these capacitors here. I'm actually getting used to this. I don't know if you've noticed. But I'm actually getting used to this pretty quickly. Getting pretty accurate on these uh, components here with the iron. So what I need to do is actually wick these away. So I'll use a bit of super fine wick. Super fine wick here was thanks to Jason's Electronics Repair. His link will be in the description as well. But this super fine wick, 0.8mm, perfect for Nintendo Switch boards. Not cheap, but it's perfect. Well, basically any wick will do. If I can get some in time, I'll include some goot wick, which is the stuff I normally use. Mm, getting, you, getting used to this for wicking might be a little tricky for me. Like I said, I am used to working on an optical port. I'm pretty sure that given enough time... I could probably get used to it. Ow. That's hot. Probably should have uh, been a little bit more careful there. Okay, so let's just give this a clean and I can take a look at it a little better. So I think the auto sleep feature on this is actually when it's when your hand is so still that it doesn't detect a movement. Um, now obviously I've got pretty still hands uh, because I'm used to having still hands. I'm used to balancing my hands on the desk while I'm working and that allows me to get a little bit more precise when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I'm just going to clean up this flux. So the flux is burnt, but a little tip I've got is when you've got burnt flux, if you just add a little bit of heat, that's in the way. If you just add a little bit of heat to it. And you should be able to clean it up nicely. Okay. And let's just dry this off a little bit and then I'm going to inspect it and see how good of a job I've done. Considering I've never used a microscope with a screen, I'm always used to the optical ports. And that looks pretty good. No knock components, every pad appears to be soldered. That's pretty good, considering. Taking everything taken into consideration, uh, I think I've done a pretty good job there in terms of the soldering on that chip uh, it looks fairly accurate but does it charge okay so for some reason my overhead camera decided to crash um, I'm not sure what part I'm gonna have to edit out but I'm gonna find out if this is uh, gonna charge let's have a look so that chip that I just changed was the M92 T36 and that's the main power management I see <laughs> it charges it charges Not 0.57 amps 15.2 volts I think I did a pretty good job on that considering I'm not used to looking at a screen and I've just realized I've still got the microscope on the screen let's show you this under the scope then shall we 15.2 volts I know that's backwards uh, but there we go excellent so there's one job, but now the next question, can it do a HDMI port from something like a PS4? Let's find out. So what I've got here is a PlayStation 4 motherboard. This is a donor board, of course. But if we take a look here, you're going to see that this is indeed 
an original port which means this port has never been changed this is lead free solder which is fairly hot uh, fairly high melting temperature let's move that out of the way we don't need that so this is fair, a fairly high melting temperature right here so we don't need the microscope for this part because we're just going to try and heat up the board and um, we're going to go to 480 degrees celsius Actually, let's go straight to 500 because this is high temperature. Now, obviously, if you're just removing the port to actually install a new one, you don't really care about melting the port. Or at least you shouldn't do because it's just worrying over nothing because you're replacing it. So what we want to find out here is if this is actually capable of removing a port without damaging the pads. So we don't want to damage pads. We want to be able to remove this port safely. So... Anyone that, that's watched my channel for a long time knows that I don't use low melt solder. So this has got to reach my standards of approval to actually be able to remove the port. This port has never been changed. It is a brand new, well it is a, a factory port. So this is a scenario what most people are going to be facing when removing HDMI ports. And the PS4 motherboard is fairly thick. So it takes a lot of heat. A little bit of an itchy nose there, but never mind. Nothing worse than having an itchy nose while you're working. While you're halfway through doing something. Because you need to itch your nose, but you don't want you don't want to stop what you're doing. Okay, so this port is starting to get a little bit warmer now. It's starting to get ready to come off and there we go so that did take a couple of minutes to come off but what's a couple of minutes between friends right if we're doing a job like this then we don't really want to be rushing into it and as you can see i'm going to do this live so you know that there's no wizardry right here or not live but you can see everything i'm doing so let's put that on there and as you can see there are no torn traces on that port so basically what will happen now is we would just drop a new port on well clean up the solder joints on the uh HDMI port and basically install a new port so yes it is capable of removing a HDMI port uh, from uh, a PlayStation 4 which is a fairly thick board so if it's capable of that it's capable of a USB-C port on a Nintendo Switch and it's also capable of a HDMI port on a Xbox uh, they're the main consoles that they're, well they're the main items that I actually work on so unfortunately that's the only examples that I can give in that situation Okay, and hopefully that was proof enough that this kind of work can be done with cheaper equipment and that, uh, you know, you don't need all of this fancy equipment, the BGAB workstations, the expensive hot air guns, the he heavy expensive soldering irons, all of that sort of stuff. It can be done with this sort of thing, and I think this proves it because I am not used to using this. I use an AMScope microscope. I'm not going to knock that isopropyl alcohol over again today. That is not happening. Uh, but I use an Amscope microscope and I'm used to looking through an optical port. Albeit I only use one eye because I can't use two eyes. There's something about my eyes that just don't adjust uh, to be able to use the two eye pieces. Uh, but one of them is converted to a camera port so as my viewers can see what, I'm, what I can see anyway. But to say that I'm used to using an eyepiece rather than a LCD screen or the display on the screen. Uh, what you guys saw, I was actually using that display because this one... When it's in USB mode, doesn't actually show anything up. But hopefully that proves it that it can be done. I'm not used to using the screen, um, and I managed that absolutely fine um, to change that M92, which is a very, very close area in terms of components. There's a lot of components packed into a small space. Um, and yeah, the, I mean, this stuff costs less than £150. So if you do want to enter the giveaway, then all you've got to do is, of course, be subscribed to the channel. So hit subscribe down below if you're not already and also like this video 
So like the video, be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment down below saying the word cheapo. I'll put that on the screen now. C-H-E-A-P-O. Cheapo. One word. Leave that comment and then what I'll do on a live stream next week, I'm going to announce the winner live on stream and I will put a notification on my community page before I go live. So one thing you need to do is make sure that the bell notifications are ticked for all notifications to ensure that you don't miss that community post when I announce that I'm going live for a winner. Of course, the, the winner will be picked live, but it will also be on a replay as well. But that is going to be it for this video. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this happen. A big thank you to you guys for letting us reach over 20,000 subscribers. The amount of support on the channel has been absolutely insane over the past four or five months. And I am super, super grateful. So this is my way of giving back a little bit to you guys. Uh, I am really grateful. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.